Now that you know how you can use a topic model and how you can fit a topic model, it's a good idea to take a step back, look a little bit more technically at what a topic model actually is. So first let's consider topic models as a form of dimensionality reduction. The core idea here is that um, if you want to do text analysis, you, you have unstructured data, right? Text are unstructured data. You can, of course, treat them as a bunch of zeros and ones, but that doesn't really help you. And to understand text, you have to um, start looking at the meaning of things, and that's difficult. Hey, you, you can't run a regression analysis on a speech. However, a term document matrix is just a matrix where the, the, uh, the, the documents are the cases, the rows and the words are the observations or the columns, and the frequencies are in the cells. And a matrix you can throw into your statistical model. You can run any sort of um, algorithm on it that you can run on any matrix. You can also run on a DTM. So the, the question here is, can we use a regular clustering algorithm to analyze a DTM? Probably in, in some of your statistics courses, you've run into factor analysis. And you have learned that if you have uh, multiple questions that are more or less about the same construct, you should be able to call to use a factor analysis. And the questions that are measuring the same construct or the same scale, they should be in the same factor. Um, essentially, you're using factor analysis also to reduce the dimensionality of your server responses in that case, because instead of having 10 different variables, you now only have one or two different latent variables, the factors that explain the variation among the individual questions. The same idea can be used for text. Suppose we have some uh, pretty silly text like LDA is a topic modeling algorithm. News algorithms are important in journalism. Journalism is important for society. And we would cluster this. Um, if you just look at the document feature matrix, you see that's a matrix of three rows by eight columns. Um, and this has already taken some of the stop words out, of course, um, but there's eight informative words. And the key idea here is that um, you might not need all those eight words to describe those three documents. And so there might be latent factors underlying the distribution of those eight columns. And uh, probably if you look at those, you'll see that there's one latent factor with LDA and topic modeling in them. So that the one that talks about topic modeling, there might be a latent factor that talks about how things are, how, how journalism is important. And if you know how well a document scores on those two latent factors, you might be able to, to explain most of the variations in the occurrence of the actual underlying words. And so you can treat uh, combinations of columns as a latent factor. And by doing a, a factor analysis, you reduce the number of columns that you need to know to be able to explain your data. And slightly more technically, what you're doing is reducing the dimensionality of the data sets, since you now no longer need eight um, dimensions to represent the text, maybe you only need your two latent factors. So the assumption is that the word frequencies you can observe, the manifest word frequencies, are determined by underlying latent factors, and that those latent factors are lower in number than the number of words that they explain. In fact, factor analysis has been applied to document term matrices since at least the 1980s in a technique that has been called latent semantic analysis or latent semantic indexing. Um, the specific type of factor analysis was used is singular value decomposition, which is a general mathematical technique that can um, reduce the dimensionality of any matrix in such a way as to keep the highest amount of variance from the original matrix if you convert it back. What is very interesting from this is that the, the results of using um, the singular value decomposition, so latent semantic analysis, gave some very interesting um, and interpretable topics, and it actually seemed to mimic human generalizations um, and also human errors. Um, however, it also quickly turned out that it was quite difficult to interpret those results sometimes. One problem is the, the possibility of negative factor loading, which are often um, difficult to interpret. The other is that the models were not particularly robust in, in the face of ambiguous terms and, and antonyms, uh, two words that have opposite meanings, which would often be clustered into the same topic. And um, even though the, the, the mathematical principle is well understood, there's not really any sort of theoretical interpretation of why that mathematical technique would yield a mechanism um, that mimics how humans think about text or how text is constructed. 
So latent Dirichlet allocation or LDA, which is the form of topic modeling we are talking about now, was proposed uh, more or less as an evolution of latent semantic analysis. The two big differences between LSA and LDA are that LDA is a, has a very strong generative statistical model. And what we mean there is that it starts from an assumption about how a text is constructed. And then that assumption is used to build a mathematical model for the construction of texts. And then the actual text that we observe are used to fit the parameters in this mathematical model. Um, the specific statistical model, the, sorry, the specific generative model underlying LDA is that it assumes that if an author, say a journalist, wants to write a text, he will first choose a mix of topics to write about. So maybe he wants to write 50% about football and 30% about corruption. And then for each um, word, he selects one of the topics. So maybe the first word will be a football word and the second word might be a corruption word. And then finally, for each word, um, the journalist selects a word from the topic. So maybe from football, he will take championship and from corruption, he will take bribery. And then uh, for the third word, he might talk about FA and for the fourth word, he might talk about another football term, another corruption term, etc. Now, of course, we know that most journalists don't actually write articles like this, right? They don't think of some topics and then randomly select words to, to write about the topic and, and put them all in a big bag. Um, however, if we um, assume uh, between quotes that this model is true, then we can then reverse engineer how texts are constructed and we can try to find the underlying latent topics that the journalists might have chosen to write about these things. So the, the good thing of having this generative model is that it connects the, the mathematics of how the model is fit with a notion about how that might actually match um, how a, um, a document is constructed in reality. A second important property is that LDA is a mixture model, which means that a word is not assigned to a single topic, but a word can easily be in multiple topics, and this can deal with the ambiguity problem. So if you have an ambiguous word like bank, which can mean both a river bank and a financial bank, it could well be in uh, both in a topic about financial institutions and it can be in a topic about nature. Documents um, can also be members of multiple topics, huh? like the example, we have a football topic with a corruption topic in the same documents. And especially if you're analyzing uh, mixed content, like uh, a lot of newspaper articles, um, a lot of other um, text documents actually deal with multiple topics. They're not strictly only about one topic. And then this mixture model can be, um, can be very useful because it matches how we know that journalism works, right? Finally, um, even though um, words can be multiple topics and documents can be multiple topics as well, they are skewed towards only having a couple of topics. So the model prefers a document with maybe like one big topic and a couple small topics or, or two bigger topics rather than a document that is um, spread over all the topics. And this, this preference, this skewedness towards um, a low number of topics um, is based on the Dirichlet distribution and depends on the alpha hyperparameter. 